Hello everybody. Today I am going to do um, two paintings side by side and it's going to be um, a busy lemon in watercolor. But I'm going to use the pencils and I am going to use the liquid or tubes of watercolor so we can see how things are going side by side. All right, let's begin. If you're stuck at home and you're looking for something to do, just look around for anything that is accessible. It could be a lemon, it could be a tube of paint or your glasses and you can use that to start painting, sketching or doing whatever you can to have fun or just do something different. And I was going to do a side by side pencils with only the Japanese brushes and also I was going to do the tubes of watercolor and kind of give you an idea what's the difference and how it looks I have side by side I'm gonna sketch both of them together or one after another I'll be using two small brushes um, a three and I cannot see, I don't have my glasses, let's put that on. And 10 point zero. So what we get, this is a very, very tiny brush. So our element is not quite a circle. Now, if I want to make it more lemony looking, I can extend because I'm in charge of this sketch. This is kind of where I want my table to end or my surface. I'm not going to put them on the cutting board because that's going to give me more, um, I guess, complicated composition than just sitting on the table. And then I'm going to position it, position it to the side. So I'm going to have a ellipse, a very gentle oval. And I'm gonna do that here. Now if you see how many circles I made, but they're so so gentle. Um, and then we going to, and I want to see a little bit of my step right there. And you guys cannot see it, but okay, I'll move it right here. I want to see a little bit of the stem part um, of the leg. See that? So it's right here. It's right here. So I'm going to position it in a way I can see it. So you're looking at it from a little bit different perspective, but that's okay. And it's just a little oval, and from that oval, the stem is coming out. Same thing here. We're just going to pull that out, and it is coming out of the fruit. Now I'm using. I, if you don't have to, if you don't have this, obviously you cannot use it, but this is a really good uh, eraser because I can just go over and pretty much roll it and take away a lot of the pencil marks. Now I can go back in and just leave the ones I want. So, they're a little bit different, but that's okay, because every time we paint, we cannot make everything the same. So the first one that I will do is, I will start with the pencils and use this. So this is like a perfect traveling set. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, this is almost like ochre, and I am just gonna place this ochre line on the shadowy side right here also i'm gonna use some of that ochre for my background and then like if you watched the video yesterday i'm using my pointer and gently rubbing this on to the surface of the paper very gently 
Now I do have a shadow here, so I am going to emphasize on the shadow part. So I grabbed a little bit more on that. We're going to do that in a second. The next part will be me adding the yellow part of the lemon. And I am going again, push it down with my pointer and going around my lemon. Pushing harder on areas that I want more color and very, very light on areas that I do not need a lot of color. So there is that. Now, I am going to get the light orange. And again, positioning my pencil, because the way that I use them, I always have one side that it's taken out. I am going to go around and just add a little bit of orange right there. The top part of my, um, and I don't have that in this set, but I'll open another ink set pencil, watercolor pencils. And this is 36 colors, I think. So I hope I have that there. But I'm going to use pink. And this is, this is Prismacolor. Um, this is Prismac. Made in Canada. And this one is their wit and is Britney. So I'm going to use the pink and again I'm going to rub that on the top. So I want my background to be super super light and super super gentle. It's almost like there but not. Okay, so I'm only using this for this painting and I'm going to use real brushes and tubes of paint for the other one. So I'm going to start with, this is the little, little guy. I'm going to start with that and with this brushes, your water is already here. So the only thing you have to do is from time to time you have to wipe your bristles um, so you're not transferring one color into the mix. So I'm squeezing gentle and it's going to release a little bit drop of water and I'm going to start going around and painting. And for everybody who is starting to do watercolor, this is a very easy controlled watercolor painting that you're going to do. Now the only problem that I see with this is using these brushes. Is I don't have that much of a control with the wetness. Like sometimes it releases way too much. So this is our lemon. I know. You see this? I cannot lift it a lot because it's going to start dripping. The next part is I'm gonna go for the background. And the first thing I want to do is my shadow because I want this to be not mixing or taking away from it. And there it is. So dripping or spilling out, I'm using paper tissue and I'm just going to take some of that wetness away. It's not of course we don't have a lot of time when we like to wait for things to dry so we have that problem happening but no still always fix it this is it for the lemon Try to use almost the same colors 
on the other one. So this is going to be my break between left and right. And now I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to use, we can use the blocks if we want to because my other paint also is dry. So even though it's from tubes, it's dried up. And I'm going to apply. Now if you notice, now this is not traveling. So this was the purpose of me going first with a little bit more of a dry brush. If you have more control with the watercolor, if there is less water, obviously. And then I'm going to push this around. I'm going to wash my brush. And now I'm going to wet the top part of my lemon. So we have a light source that is hitting right here. Haven't touched the wet paint yet, but now I'll go there. And very gently, I'm going to push it around and make it go where I want to. Because my water is not sitting on top. And if you see how my brush is dancing on the surface, can I take a little bit of water here? go and touch the wet of the lemon because then it's going to sit through. Before this completely dries, I want to just spread it out. And also give a little water to the rest because I'm going to apply really fast. Shadow's gonna be right here. So I'm not giving so much water that it's gonna be hard for me to control the paint. So do you see how it's starting to sit right here? As I touch it, I'm gonna take a clean brush and push it back, wipe the brush, and I think I help this paper to get drier on this area. And then I'm staying, staying away from that. I'm going to take a little bit more ochre and I'm going to create my shadow. You see the line that I'm keeping between the lemon and the shadow? Now if you have more time to have this dry up a little bit, do that. Um, because then you're going to be, it's going to be much easier for you to push things back and forward happen when areas are dry, like for example the lemon versus the background. You don't want them to start mixing. You want them to be separated. And I'm gonna put a little bit of almost like a cloud right here. And once it dries I'm gonna close that gap. But for now, we're good. I'm gonna get a little bit of pink on the top. Got pink there. Now more water. 
big of one with color painting, so water can be very important in. And the amount of water is important too, because that will make the paint travel faster or slower, depending on how much water you're putting in. I use pencils and also I use the tubes or the blocks of watercolor. It really depends. Sometimes I use all of them together and that works too. A little bit more color right here. Go in for the green. Now when we want green that seems more like leaves, we can put a little bit of ochre in it and we can put a little bit of red. Go back to the ochre, making sure my brush is kind of dry. Now I know my lemon is drying, so I'm going to emphasize a little bit on the shadow right underneath. To wash the brush and smooth that hard edge. Go back to the orange. And I'm going to apply a little specks on the lemon. Let's close some gaps here that I left. And then get a little lighter on the lemon, which is like a lemon color. I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna go back to my other one, which is the pencil, and I'm gonna add the lighter color, and then I'm gonna add the darker color. And I will be using this brush. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit off, not on top of my work, and I'm going to close this gap. Now when you're using um, this brush with pencils, I think I have more control with this brush than this brush, so um, I feel like it will be better, like for example this already has too much water. yellow and water so it's not hard
pushing hard on the surface because you can scratch the paper so I want to be very very gentle about this and I'm going to get the orange do the same thing and I'm going to do the same with the green different types. One was pencil and one was paints and it's this set which I just got and I love what I'm um, doing with it. Um, and that's it. That's it for today. So two lemons side by side. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you here next week. Bye!